Hello again, and it's time for another project. Nice, simple one today, hopefully. We're just going to do a little router work, not too much. Basically, we're going to do the lines on this angel fish. So, all the blue lines we can see there, we're going to route those out, put some paint in, sand it down, and then we're basically going to paint all the other sections. There's another option, you can actually remove all the larger sections and leave the thinner line, make it slightly wider with a marker pen if you wish. But for this one today, just the lines we're going to route out. So sometimes it's easier to do as regards that you don't have a lot of this to remove. However, there's a little bit more pressure because obviously as we're following that one line, if we go off that line, that will be the end of the project. So you've got to get it right first time. There's no going back with these ones. Whereas if you're doing the intersections, you can come in at the middle and just nibble away till you get to the outside and just take your time at the lines so a little bit more pressure but i'm sure we can manage on a little easy easy project like this one now for this one you'll notice it's been drawn out on tracing paper now i have done two or three of these already and i will show you at the end of the video we're just going to put the, this one in with the other members of its little gang so tracing paper normally i'll just print it off on printer paper standard now the way I do it is literally I've got my tablet here, as you can see, and it's ideal for me because the wood is six inches wide, just cheap, cheap fencing wood. You spend a couple of minutes sanding that down. I can just show you, that's the sanded down section. If I just spin it around quickly, that's the rough section. And you can certainly see the difference between that and that. And I'll just you a couple of minutes with a belt sander, just to smooth it all down. I'd rather leave my pieces as long as we can if you know what i mean you might be tempted to just cut that piece off across there but then you've only got that little section to work with so you might as well leave all the cutting to the last minute we are going to cut this out on a scroll saw and i'll leave that to the last minute don't be tempted to come in well we'll cut out the fish first and then you've got no area for your router to move on so always leave your cutting to the last same with this we could have cut it in half and made it a bit smaller but i do have a couple more projects to fit on here afterwards so for now We'll leave it on the original fencing wood. And like I was going to say there, my tablet screen is five and a half inches wide across. So I know when I can zoom in with my tablet, we've got an image here, or you can make it big as small as you like. I'll just take it to the maximum. So it's literally just to say somewhere around there, five and a half inches. Pop your tracing paper over the top. It is possible. Don't touch that with your hand, you touch touching that and it will all go a bit wrong. So you might want to make a little support across. I've just got into the habit of rotating this round and we draw around with a pencil and basically start tracing that out. You only want a rough guideline, remember. You can take it off that and do it thicker afterwards. Put it on a bit, a bit of tape and obviously you can zoom that in to ever how big you want it. Once it's obviously done, peel it off. And we pop it onto our piece of wood there. Good old carbon paper underneath and literally go over the top with a nice, I prefer to use pen. It just stands out a bit better from pencil and then remove that. And there's our little image transferred for today's project. So nothing too fantastic. It measures in at roughly five inches by five inches. And like I just said, I've actually made four, this will be the fourth fish and we'll see them at the end when they're all swimming away in a nice little school, hopefully. So for now we can pop that to one side and you'll get a few more projects out of your carbon paper. Now today because we are just doing the lines I would normally use CNC bits to do all my lines with to start off with and then go in with N milling bits to finish off removing all the larger sections but just because we are doing the lines only we're just going to use a N milling bit. These are eBay or Amazon. They do come with a small shaft on them a 3.75 millimeter so if you're going to use an adapter, uh, a quarter inch router, you will need the adapter collet. Just get that one out there, it's quite tight, is that one? 6.35 millimeter or quarter of an inch. So your 3.175 millimeter literally slots into there. And that will now fit your quarter inch router, no problem whatsoever. If your router is a half inch shank on it, shaft, you also need a bigger adapter. So that's all we're going to use today, because all we have to do is the lines only. I did try a couple more bits, some were a bit thicker, 
couple of sample pieces on the side here on another piece of wood. Some were a bit obviously too wide. Some were a little bit too skinny. But these, these end milling bits are fantastic for clearing out with should it be one of those kind of projects. So end milling bits today. We've got it in our adapter. We'll set it to a couple of millimetres. Same again, you can do a couple of samples on the sign and find one that suits. But for now, we're just going to route out all the lined areas. <laughs> Stay there. And then we'll come in with a scroll saw. I will literally just draw a little frame all the way out, round. Just freehand. These are just to go on the gate, so nothing too fantastic, like so. And then we'll use that as our line. Pop our painting. Sand it down so we've got nice black lines running through here. And then we use the paint again to cover the rest of the fish. Once we've done a bit of clear out and a bit of tidy up with a little engraving bit. If I can just find it here. Just cheap engraving bits like so. But they're ideal. We're going to get it. There we go. They're ideal because they will just fit into your Dremel. No problem. And it's just a nice size. It's the same width as the end milling bit, funny enough. So that will just fit in there nicely. And we'll just go around and give it a nice tidy up. A bit of sanding down. And obviously we're ready for the painting. Okay, let's pop this one in the router. We'll do a couple of samples to get our depth. And we'll start routing this one out. Right, we've done a couple of samples with the end milling bit. And I'm quite happy with that one there. So it's all set up in the router now. Ready to do all the lines on this little project. We don't have to go too deep because we're just going to put a bit of paint in. But obviously you don't want to thick a bit on because you don't want the lines to be too wide. And one, this is one of those projects, and I always say on most of my videos, never route out on the line. If you're removing this, always route out up to the line. But on this occasion, we're basically going to go right on top of the lines, as near as we can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect, remember. Just simple, simple little fun projects to stick on the front gate with the rest of them. So we're all set up. I've clamped this wood down on this one, if I can just see there. We've got it clamped down, a little clamp over there, just to hold it in place. It doesn't need it. And if you struggle with your routing, sometimes you like to put it towards you, you can turn your wood round and just rotate in. I just can't do this the other way because I've got the scroll saw in the way on the other side. I'll just show you the mess in that corner over there. So the fish is actually upside down for now, but we are going to be turning this wood as we go along. Okay, so we're all set up. Remember, just the lines on this one. Let's start routing this one out. Right, we've gone all the way round with that end milling bit. That didn't really take a lot of doing. You can more or less see from there, we've done all our lines. So you shouldn't have any pencil lines showing afterwards. Is it perfect? It doesn't really matter. Not everyone's going to be perfect, is it? So I'm not overly concerned. Just rough fencing wood. And a nice little project to fill in an hour or so on an afternoon. So... That's our route a bit done, should I say. That's all finished with. Now for me, as always, I like to use engraving bits. They come in different shapes and sizes. Just eBay special. I will put on links in the description. And I just find one that fits a nice flat bottom with sides. And I will use this just to go inside the bits. Just get those little nodgly bits off there. I think my end milling bits are starting to ready to renew now. So it's not as neat as it normally is. But we'll just go inside, give that all a nice general tidy up, and then we use a bit of sandpaper just to get there and get those bits off. It just fits in there nicely, like so. And then we'll mark it off with a pencil. 
all the way around and then when we come back again we'll be ready for cutting this one out. Right, that's it. That's enough cleaning down. We've used the sandpaper and I literally just got a pencil and drawn around a little framework as you can just about see from there. And that's our line we're going to follow with the scroll saw to cut it all out. Now, depending on how you want to sand your wood down, remember we're going to brush paint into the routes out areas and then we'll give it a little sand over. You might want to leave your cutting out to the last section depending if you're going to use a belt sander or put that through a plane or whatever but for me i'm just going to cut it out now then we'll put the paint on and then give it a little sanding down rounding off the edges and stuff and then we can get on to just basically coloring it in with our painter's touch paint now for cutting out quickly those that's new to a scroll saw you basically get three types of blade there's fancy ones different different teeth on and stuff that's just personal thing for you to find out but basically you get a pinless blade they come on your more fancier saws there's no pins on the end nice fancy clamp you get pin blades they're on your more cheaper saws they have little pins in you would hook it on at the top and the bottom always have your teeth facing towards you it wants to be smooth on the way down and rough on the way up for me personally i like spiral blades the teeth spiral the full length and they will cut in any direction they're ideal for larger projects you don't certainly don't need it on this one today because it is a small project but i just prefer to use spirals and with my little dropper i have to use these adapter clamps at either end they're a bit of a pain sometimes because you've got to take them out put it on tighten it up with an allen key hook it on hook it off same again so they're not the best in the world but uh there's your choice of blades so we'll pop this pegasus number five spiral on quickly now nothing too fancy give it a quick cut out and then we'll be ready for popping our paint into the end bits we'll just give it a general sanding of the edges cut it out now right there's our fish nicely cut out now i'm not the best scroller in the world so i'll literally go around now with a sanding drum on my dremel again just to round these edges off and any bits that aren't so clever we just clear it up nicely and a quick going over with sandpaper again and then we'll be on putting a bit of painting in just to fill in basically the routed out areas we're going to want black for all the lines and while we're here, we'll pop a bit of white into the eye, then sand it all nice and clear, and then basically just fill in the sections with the colours required. The yellow, the white, and the black. Okay, just quick tidy up first, then when we come back, we'll be on for painting. right that's all nicely tidied up now we've got those sides definitely near enough what we need for these little projects 
they're all nice and smooth and we generally just round it off slightly so now it's just a simple case of putting the black paint in i always seem to brush my uh paints you could spray this just as easy and sand it down i'm going to put no sealants on this there is wood sealers you can purchase i wouldn't put, bother too much on little projects like this because we are going to paint the old piece but if you're going to put the lines in and just leave the wood some paints could have a tendency to bleed into the side walls because we've basically opened up the grain we've routed out those sections so to stop that you can purchase wood sealers and brush it all in first and once it's dry hopefully it seals the side of the walls or you could spray this with a bit of varnish just to seal it all but i've done these before and i don't have no issues with this painter's touch paint bleeding into any to the walls like i say we are going to paint it all afterwards so we're not going to see any but if you have your concerns about it certainly look into getting paint sealers and stuff like that so i'm just going to brush it in get it into the side the little realtor right here is like so i tend to go over it twice could you all look and maybe you've missed a bit if you've already put your paints away a little black sharpie pen and you might just get in there and just dab it on and do it that way so it's nothing too fancy about this just a simple case of getting in like so nice stiff brush and we'll get into those little grooves keeping your paint on there obviously and there we go just like that doesn't matter about any spillages uh, any rough edges should i say remember we're going to sand this all down and hopefully once it's sanded down we'll have those nice crispy black lines in place so we'll do all our black like so and a little white in the eye when we come back we'll sand it all down and then we'll get on to using painters touch again these are ideal for outside i've got no issue with these paints at all i tend to put a little bit of water on as i'm painting because they are quite thick and they do dry fairly quick so you will find especially with the white you'll be going around painting and it's more or less dry and especially on a hot day like today if you're going to do this outside so i'll have a little bit of water and just water it down a little bit you can always come back and put on an extra coat afterwards okay so we'll come back when we've more or less completed all our painting right that's it this little project is finished now it's only a small little fun project it measures in five and a half inches by five and a half inches once we put the paint on and finish that i actually went on with boiled linseed oil i like to use that on most of my projects that's literally just to darken the wood again so we just brushed it on i didn't show you that part and we put some on the back as well so that just darkens it down again and you might just notice there we've got a nice little shine going now it didn't need it but i do like a shiny finish on my little project so i literally just sprayed on first bit of gloss that i could find nothing fantastic there either and for me it just finishes the project off nicely now it didn't need it because it is painters touch paints and they are designed to go outdoors so you, you don't need any varnish on as such and obviously the boiled linseed oil is designed to go outdoors to protect the wood so it didn't need that but i just do like that little bit of bit of a shine finish to it like so so that's it this little project is finished remember it's just on cheap fencing wood we routed out the lined areas with the end milling bit and then basically it was just a case of painting it obviously before that i prefer to cut it out first on a scroll saw with a pegasus spiral blade and obviously if you've done one they do go in schools these ones so we're gonna need another one like so just to finish him off and if you don't too you might as well find yourself another one with my projects i do prefer to just do one off items so doing three of these has really been a bit of a chore for me 
and then his little friend come across as well, come over as well. So we end up with four of those just to finish that off nicely. And they make nice single items. You could put that on a little stand as it is, on a little base with a dowling rod, and have that as a single item, or you should put two together, four together. These are literally just going to go in my garden. I will find a home for them eventually. And while I was on doing them, they're obviously swimming away from the big boy here. That was exactly the same way. You can see that lovely shine on there. So he's giving them a little bit of a chase off. And to help him out, we have this chap coming in from the other side. And that's it. This little project, when I say little, we've ended up doing six to finish it off, is completed. Nice little easy projects, nothing too fantastic. Bit of, bit of fencing wood, fairly cheap for your garden centre or DIY store. You might sort of know them as gravel boards, or fencing boards. I just call them fencing wood. And that's it. Fun little project. Angelfish. Good old little clownfish Nemo over there. And we're not too sure what this one's called. We're sort of talk, trying to research what that one is. So if you have any, any idea what that is, I'll be interested to know. And that's it. These little projects are finished. Thank you very much for watching.